You know, sometimes I feel just a bit lazy. I need to post something on my socials and I have no idea or I have a render, but it doesn't look really tasty because this isn't lazy tutorials. Uh, this is tasty tutorials, so I need to make something that looks tasty. Today, I thought I'd show you three ways of how I improve my renders. If you like this type of content, leave a like or subscribe, helps me out a lot. So let's go to the video. For this video, I had an idea of modeling a Halloween themed thing. So I'm modeling a pumpkin over here. Very simple, nothing too complicated. Just a simple UV sphere and then extrude it outside and modeled into a very simple looking pumpkin. I just add a couple of bevels, I add a couple of facial features that I usually do on my characters, but in this case I thought I would carve them into the pumpkin. It made a bit more sense since it's Halloween themed. Simple coloring, simple vine stuff also, uh, created by using a Skinify, I think it's a Skinify modifier, a couple subdivision modifiers and just influencing the scale of some stuff. Started to add a couple of materials so it doesn't look as empty. Uh, did something that I would usually do when I'm working on this stuff. Just a plain background, a camera, couple colors, that's it. And an a, a simple HDRI and I rendered it out. Now, the final result looks like this. So it's not very good and I'm guilty of this. I've done this stuff in the past. I would just make it so, seemed okay, post it. With time, I started to figure out a couple of ways that actually improved my renders greatly and they are very simple processes to follow. So tip number one is basically create interaction. Now, I mentioned this because this can be done at the beginning of your modeling process. So you don't still have to work on materials, lighting and that sort of stuff. In my case, I thought it would be cute or nice, since we have this vine element, to create two pumpkins that interact with each other. So create two pumpkins that would intertwine with each other, look at each other. You can see here that I started to position them. I tried it to first make them interact with their faces or rather their expressions or rotations of the faces like one face is slightly more turned to the other and the other is pointed just slightly outwards so that's it for interaction now interaction is extremely important in posts like these because it's a simple picture if you ever look at pictures that are just okay here's my model it's it's nothing special so in this case i'm not saying that it's extremely special but at least you have some sort of interaction that draws you into the picture that you think oh that's nice or oh that reminds me of me and my i don't know friend or whatever you just try to create interaction in this case i've created with with some just vines so in this case i'm just trying to work the vines inside and outside of each other so they have this sort of hugging almost effect like they're holding each other i thought it was kind of cute since the halloween stuff is just usually associated with horror and fear and gore and that sort of stuff and in this case it would be like two cute pumpkins handling each other that correct well anyway so this seemed like a good idea also with the skinify trick it's really easy to go about you just model them around and that's it. But now you might be asking, okay, but what if I don't have two pumpkins? What if I'm working on a completely different render? What if it's a spaceship? What if it's a plant or whatever? In any case, you always need to have some sort of interaction. If it's not interaction with another object, make it an interaction with the camera. Maybe change the angle, maybe change the perspective. Usually that helps because you're trying to create an interaction within the actual post and then you want this interaction to translate to the person that's seeing it. I'm strictly speaking from Instagram or rather social media point of view, so from a social media point of view, because that's where I mostly post my stuff. Basically, it's the same for clients. You need to make stuff that it's responsive. You need to make stuff that's interactive in a way that makes you think, oh, this is something I do with my friends, or oh, this is something that I do by myself, or oh, this is something that I would like to do. So the main takeaway from our first tip is create interaction with whatever you may have in the scene. Now it's time for tip number two. So tip number two is materials. Materials in the sense of how you can make your materials better. The main thing I do is I add a color ramp. 
And that's because if I use just a solid color, I have only the variety of the light. I don't have any sort of color variety whatsoever. It's much easier and it adds a bit more interest if you add a color ramp. If you can add a mapping node and a texture node, I turn around the rotation. So I'm trying to build that sort of from the bottom to the top type of gradient thing. I also use the gradient texture in this case. So I'm trying to figure out a way of how to make them a bit more interesting, a bit heavier, because you can also add a bit of weight with color itself. In this case, I'm just using black and white to see where the relations are. UI gradients, and they have a really good selection of gradients that are mostly used for UI UX applications, but they work really well also in these cases. So in this case, I just chose a darker, redder orange and a yellowish, ye yellowish reddish type of color. I add a bump and a noise texture that are set up to be very light. And that's because I want to have just a bit of variety on the surface. It's not necessarily important, but it's important to create a bit of variety on your surface. And after that, I play with the roughness, specular and specular tint. My go-to recipe for this sort of glossy, but not too glossy type of material is the specular at 0.8 specular tint at 2 to 0 4 and then roughness from 0 2 to 0 4 so i don't go too hard on any of those except for the specular and then i maybe dial in a bit of clear coat and a bit of clear coat roughness and that's how i get this type of material that's how i get this type of pumpkin material in here uh, in this case i'm just adding a bit of a different color to the outline of the eyes and of the mouth just to make a bit of differentiation and i then apply the same principle to the others i'm just adding color ramps all over the place to the stems to the vines also to the rocks i'm just using different textures so in this case i'm using a musgrave texture to create the illusion of the small indentations in the stem i'm using then a darker green and a let's say dark green to yellow color i'm not trying to replicate a true material i'm just trying to create just an approximation because the object itself is already presenting the form so it's not going to be in the focal point and it's not going to hold the whole picture together but it's a nice addition to just add a bit of it i could have done a bit different the musgrave the gradient whatever but the main point remains, you're just creating a bit of variety and it's much better if you add just a bit of color to variegate it. So for the rocks, I use a pointiness trick. So that's usually used for edge wear or that sort of stuff. But in this case, I just use it to propagate and do, I'm almost doing like a stylized, but not really type of material. So again, they're not gonna be in the focal point. They are just there to offset a bit the color of the actual pumpkin and of the background and of the vines. So that's completely it. And the main takeaway is variegate your materials. Add a color ramp, always try to find gradients on UI gradients if you have any trouble finding them and add a bit of bumps. So this leads us to tip number three, experiment with lighting. Take your time with lighting. And this is something that I'm guilty of all of the time because I could spend much, much, much more time on lighting. I used to do just an HDRI, drop it in, that's it, I'm done. And call it a day and just post that. You can see that all over my feed. But after some time, I started to test out stuff and I started to find out, okay, I can turn the mapping node around. That's a trick by Gleb Alexandrov, by the way. So I started to open HDRIs. I try to skim the rotation a bit. So I'm trying to find the sweet spot of the HDRI at full and then dial it down and dial in a bit of mesh lighting. You can see here, I'm trying all sorts of HDRIs. Some HDRIs that are outside, inside, so outside, indoors, strong contrast, low contrast, hard shadows, soft shadows. So I try and run them all through the settings. I try to see the different rotation orientations. I try to see where that sweet spot is. And for me, that sweet spot is when you have sort of the highlights on one side and then the darker side on the other. So you're creating a bit of contrast in the composition itself. And then when I have that, okay, I start to add a bit of mesh lighting. 
Uh, you can see that I'm doing that right now. So this is usually the part where I add a black body emission. I have this shader tutorial. I'll try and link it on the screen so you can check it out if you haven't. And then I also used to run through the scene with one mesh light, see if it works, see if I need another one. So there's just a lot of experimentation with lighting, with positioning, with trying to find out where the sweet spot is. Am I covering something that I don't want to cover? Uh, what do I want to highlight? So if I want to highlight the pumpkins, I want the main highlights to be on the pumpkins and I want the shadows to be the strongest on the pumpkins. So for me, that's extremely important and it has become a regular habit. I spend much more time on lighting now than on the actual modeling or materials. On the note of actually adding lights, I've also added some lamps inside of the actual pumpkins so that they have a bit more light inside of them. And that's basically it. Then I just try different techniques, adding denoisers. I also sometimes test glare nodes. I found them useful in some cases, not so useful in others. If I want just that bit of spiciness on it i add some glare very soft or i sometimes just go way too overboard but it's you know it's fun you need to go overboard so you know okay here's the limit that i can go to and that's going to be it for me so the main takeaway from this from tip number three is take your time with lighting try different settings try different rotation try different hdris try different mesh lights lamps spotlights just take your time with it it's gonna take you half an hour an hour maybe the first time you're doing it it's gonna take you three hours but in the end you're gonna end up with something that really speaks to you that really presents your model in the best way possible you can see here in the end i had the brilliant idea of just making two hearts with the vines so this could go back to the original point of the actual modeling so i've just made some hearts with the vines that they have just to add a bit of spice to the picture, but nothing too serious. And when it's rendered out, it looks like this. So to recap, three tips. The first one is create interaction, make the objects in the scene interact with each other in any way, shape or form. It can be abstract, it can be concrete. Tip number two is work on your materials. Just add a color ramp, a bump note, and that's going to improve your renders way, way, way more. And the third tip is spend some more time on lighting. Use HDRIs, try different positions, try different rotations, test what you can test with the hardware that you have. And I guarantee you, this is going to help your renders 100%. So this is gonna be it for this tutorial I, I don't know really what to call this but in any case this is going to be it hopefully you'll find this stuff useful it will help you out if you're ever in a pinch uh, let me know maybe you have some tips and tricks that you use for your renders your tutorials or your stuff if you enjoyed the video leave a like or drop me a comment i always appreciate those uh, subscribe if you haven't yet i post videos every wednesday and i'm really stoked on the content that is still to come I'll be opening a Patreon page very soon. It's going to be something of a celebration almost. We're almost close to 10K on Instagram and I think it's 3K on YouTube, which was insane to me that we're growing this fast. In any case, this is gonna be it from me for now. See you in the next one.